Max. Do you have a thesaurus? I don't oh. have a thesaurus. It's from the... Oh, I think I stole yours. It was a scintillating, exhilarating, positively, excruciatingly fantastic experience, as you could tell. The, the theft of your the book source. of multiple meanings. I did steal that joke from TikTok. I'm going to be honest. I saw that one this morning. You might have seen it. It wasn't a great joke, but I wanted the opportunity to do it. And I want the opportunity to talk to you here today, yet again, on the Sports Pod. My host, Max. Exciting to be here. Yet another new setup here. We're just throwing things at the wall, see what happens. We're excited for our new segments here today. And let's jump right in, Max. I mean, I just want to really quick look back to this setup. For having zero views from anyone, this setup is clearly amazing. Absolutely. Uh, just look at, I mean, two great players in the NFL. We got Patrick Mahomes and Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And you could say that, you know, we're on our path to greater things. So, um, we're going to start off with some off-season rankings. Um, we talked about the draft last time, mm -hmm. and uh, we had some very interesting takes. In fact, I think I had one pretty bad one, but it's okay. I, I, mean, I always make mistakes. So does Sam, clearly. <laughs> um, it happens, sadly. <laughs> anyway, um, so should we start off with top three or worst two? I say we start on a positive note. Top positive three. Note? All right, you want to start it off with me? Sure. I'll, I'll start it off here, Max. Perfect. I don't want Max to take any of mine. At number three for the best dog season, I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles. They upgraded across the board to evaluate Jalen Hurts. This, if Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback, they're easily winning the division, contending for the Super Bowl. They maybe got the number one offensive line in the NFL. They added A.J. Brown. Devonta Smith's just getting better. Behind that, you know, who knows, but they got Dallas Goddard. They've got a very good skill positions. Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell. Their running backs are fine. Their offensive line is probably, in my opinion, the number one. Their defense improved. They got Jordan Davis. They handled the offseason about as well as you could, but they're still only at, at number three. But number two, I've got the New York Jets. Just like the Eagles, they set up for their young quarterback gave him everything to succeed with multiple first round picks. They got Jermaine Johnson, excellent value at 26. They got Garrett Wilson, excellent help for Zach Wilson there. After last season, we also learned, of course, that Zach Wilson had a great off season for himself. He has that dog in him. He's improving, everyone's improving out there. They're rallying behind their quarterback. They got Brees Hall, they got Corey Davis back from injury. They got Elijah Moore. They got Garrett Wilson. They're surrounding Zach Wilson with talent. The defense got a little better too. We're gonna see the Jets be, get better this year. They're still not gonna be very good, but they're gonna go from, what were they like? Four wins to like seven or eight wins this year. All right, and hold your one, because okay, I think okay, we, okay. I, I'm pretty sure we got the same one. So I think there's a good chance. There's a pretty good chance. And obviously I'm not gonna be happy to say what it is. Anyway, number three, I gotta go with the Browns. I might not like the players that they picked up, but it, they've made some two very important pickups. Uh, Deshaun Watson, I think, was a huge. I mean, if if yeah. he comes to <laughs> excellent choice of words there, man. If if he begins to play in the NFL this season, um, I think that it they'll it'll be a happy more, ending for it, the Browns. It'll be better. This season. They'll be a, definitely a better contender. Um, and then replacing. Jarvis Landry with uh, Amari Cooper as their number one. I think, I think that's yeah, just a win-win. It's an improvement. I mean, Amari Cooper is getting older now, but I mean, he's such a solid wide receiver. Mm -hmm. he, he's pretty consistent. Um, that's why they're my number three. I think there's definitely there's definitely need for improvement still, but that and that's why they're number three. But those are two very important pickups uh, with a very good versatile quarterback. <laughs> Anyway, uh, number two, I'll, ask, I'll have to agree with the Jets. Um, those draft picks are, I think they're going to be tremendous in the long run. If I mean, they're literally ad adding weapons at the receiving core. Like you said, they had Garrett Wilson, and then they got Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. Mm -hmm. um, those are three very good wide receivers 
and we could see Garrett Wilson break mm -hmm. out. I mean, yeah. you never know. College is very different than the NFL. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we've seen some good wide receivers come yeah, out of yeah. Alabama, Ohio State, and those big-name schools. So, and, I mean, mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson out Justin of LSU. Jefferson. So, I'm... I didn't say Garrett Wilson was the best wide receiver in the last episode, and I still don't think he is, but that's definitely a weapon with mm -hmm. two other very good wide receivers. Um, and then not to mention Brees Hall, great yep. second round pick. Mm -hmm. That's, that's I mean, they're just picking up key players. Yeah. We forgot to even mention Sauce Gardner, who oh, Sauce easily Gardner. a top yeah. five player from the class. I knew we were missing one, I just couldn't think <laughs> you of know, I was blanking on one earlier. Yeah, I I'm know. Like, who was it? Top five player, so anyway. I think we should say number one at the same okay. time. Three, on go. Three, two, one, Chargers. Chargers. Yep. Okay. We yeah. both had it. Max went about a, a third of a second before me, but it was in my head too. I meant to say go. I messed it up. Yeah, I <laughs> thought he was going to say go. So when I just heard the ch, uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. JC Jackson, Khalil Mack, re-signing Mike Williams. They got a, they got more running back depth with Isaiah Spiller. They fortified their offensive line a little bit. They they've just got a great setup for Justin Herbert this offseason. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the last two seasons that they've literally been focusing on picking up O linemen in in the draft, and they've done that. Um, also in the offseason, picking up those key players that they need in the defense, especially Cleo Mack. Great mm -hmm. great trade. Um, I mean, everybody's seeing that people are getting older. I've said it too, but these guys are veterans. They'll be good players. Um, so, I mean, the Chargers are – I mean, I've seen so many uh, predictions where they've had Chargers over the Chiefs. And, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely going to be a fight for the top of the AFC West. But I think that that was a very good offseason for the Chargers. Yes, yes. You go ahead. So, so we're going to go to worst two. In comparison, all three of those winners, they had a young quarterback, and they were fortifying him with talent bolstering the offensive line, the defense getting a little better to help them out. One team that didn't do that for some reason was the Chicago Bears. Their offensive line was terrible last year. They didn't do anything to help that. They let Allen Robinson, a great veteran wide receiver, walk in favor of Darnell Mooney being upgraded to the number one and then bring in Byron Pringle as their number two. And don't worry, Nikhil Harry is going to be their number three wide receiver. We know how good he's been. Their defense, they got rid of Khalil Mack. They, they're talking about getting rid of Robert Quinn. It's just not a great recipe for helping out a young quarterback, Justin Fields, unlike what the Jets, what the Eagles, even what the Chargers are doing. You keep going, because I still need to think. Okay, okay. Number one, I very mu much considered the Patriots. With They lost some offensive line, some defensive pieces, they're but I'm not there. going with them. I'm going with the Washington Commanders. I touched on them on them last episode, but do you want to know what they did with their first, second, and third round picks? First round pick, they went with Jahan Dotson when they had a fine wide receiver core already. Second and third round pick, they went, they traded for Carson Wentz. Do you think that's a great idea for what a team that's not going to be close to good enough to make the playoffs should do? No, they, they had to recoup those picks, build from the bottom up. Their defense was in the bottom half. Their offensive skill positions were all right. Their quarterback's not great. Their offensive line's not great. They just didn't do... They have the illusion that they were a quarterback and a wide receiver away from the Super Bowl for some reason because they won the division at, what was it, 7-8-1 and eight and one two years ago. Yeah, that, that's not the that's case for the Commanders. Happening, no. <laughs> it I was hate, a bum off I hate to steal your number one, but okay, I'm going to okay. put that my number two. Um, it's very Fair unoriginal, enough. and I have some different reasons as well, but obviously you got to bring up Carson Wentz. Absolutely, what mm -hmm. were they thinking? I would have still rather have Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. Well, you were um, tired. He I know, but I still, have rather, I still have rather have yeah, yeah, Ryan yeah, yeah. Fitzpatrick at quarterback. Um, I just, I don't know what was happening. I don't know if they even put up a fight for Deshaun Watson. They could have gotten Matt Ryan. That was a great pickup by the Colts. Um, there, there was, I mean, Russell Wilson was out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't take Drew Locke over Carson Wentz, but there's plenty of quarterbacks that you could have gotten that just were better than Carson Wentz. Oh, yeah. Um, just, just looking at the market, just put, like, Carson Wentz went for second and third. I think Ryan was a third. Baker was a fifth. Garoppolo might just get cut. They didn't Oh, Baker, yeah, absolutely. Baker yeah. is a better quarterback. Um, and then number two, um, this, this is – 
this could be controversial, but I think acquiring the name Commanders was a terrible idea during the offseason. Um, there is just – it's just reminding me of, like, the Guardians. There's so much better names that could have replaced these teams. I don't know. I think – I mean – what were the options like? The, my, the, my favorite out of the finalists was the Washington Armada. Like the Armada is that's so cool. much better. And there was like the red, red. Uh, yeah, the Red Hawks or something. Yeah, like, some type of animal that's so much cooler. Anyway, they so much. I mean, what is the team gonna do when they realize, oh, we're the Commanders? <laughs> What's oh, their mascot? What do we need to fight like, for? Know. We need to fight for the Commanders. No, such a lame name. <laughs> yeah, if you would have been something. It could have just been so much better. Mm -hmm. So I'm very disappointed in that. Um, and then, lastly, I'll just keep it short. The draft picks were not good. Okay, okay, okay. And then number one, um, I'm gonna put Atlanta. Ooh. I. I don't know. You you got Calvin Calvin Ridley out this year. Um, Kyle Pitts is not gonna develop with whatever quarterback. What quarterback did they put in? They've got Marcus Mariota and Desmond oh, Marcus Ritter. Mariota. There you go. Marcus Mariota. If if they're going to start Marcus Mariota over Desmond Ritter, I know it too. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Mariota is not a playoff quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle Pitts is just, like I said, is just not going to do anything under Mariota. Their O-line, I think, is pretty garbage. I think their defense is also pretty garbage. And I did not see much improvement over the offseason. Yep. Funny that Max mentioned Calvin Ridley there. We're going to transition into our next segment, talking about betting. We're not getting a one-year suspension and talking about over-unders here for the NFC teams. And, you know, Max, I think we're just going to start off like we did last last week. In the NFC East, we got the Dallas Cowboys at 10.5. I went first last week. I'm going to go first again for all these. We got to give Max a little time to think about this. I probably thought about this a little too much, to be honest. Almost, the Dallas Cowboys ten and a half is a very good number for over under. I took a look at their schedule. It starts off very rough early. I'm actually predicting a Mike McCarthy firing Ooh. in week four or five, and then Dan Quinn takes over. That's pretty early. Yeah. Well, we'll say maybe six or seven, but Jerry's finger on the fire button like this it's shaking he wants to fire Mike McCarthy their schedule like literally their toughest five of their toughest six games are in that first stretch there I wouldn't be shocked if the Cowboys start off like one and four or two and four and then that happens but it really opens up a lot they they get their two games against the Giants their two games against the Commanders you know the NFC East I think it I think it drew the AFC South and the AFC, which is going to be good. Ten and a half, it's a tough number, but I think they're getting 11. I'm going with the over for the Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys. Um, I'm just going to say this. I I think they'll win the division. Uh, I don't know. It's not going to be one of those years like you were talking about earlier where Washington won with seven wins. Yeah. Um, I don't know after Amari Cooper leaving what's going on with the receiving core. CeeDee Lamb is a good he's gonna be a good player right but once you lock up C. lamb i mean they even had amari cooper last year and he was getting locked up too so what you gonna do now you got michael gallup as your wide receiver too now right so and i haven't seen i mean it was very average i mean i could say poor effort from michael oh, yeah. gallup last year so i dak had a rough start last year if i remember correctly and then he yeah. pulled it back a little bit um, obviously at that rough spot in the last playoff game, but I think I see a little bit of improvement from Dak. Dak is just a very solid quarterback. Um, Defensive-wise, um, you had a bunch of interceptions from uh, Diggs last year. Don't know if that's going to happen again. Um, I think their, their linebacking court, their linebackers are pretty good. Um, defensive line, uh, did they resign Randy Gregory or did he? No. He went somewhere he else. Lost. Um, he went... He was good in moments. He played them in others. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly... You know, I would like to pause Max for a moment. I'm switching up my reasoning. I thought they were starting off 1-4 and or 2-4. and four. They're not getting to 11 wins. I, I, I'm switching to the under on the official record. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I was I was also going to say under 2, but only <laughs> barely. I think, I think they're going to win the division. I think Philadelphia is going to become more of a threat this year. So that was my reasoning. 
while I did change up my pick officially before the, the by Max's reasoning, I'm not convinced with his Cowboys winning the division. I've got the Philadelphia Eagles winning the division here. The NFC East hasn't had a repeat champion in like 15 years or something like that. I don't know the exact year. It's not happening again. The Cowboys are not winning the division. I thought the Eagles were going to win the division, but when I'm thinking about the Cowboys aren't getting to 11 wins. If the Eagles get to 11 wins, which I could see happening, they're winning the division. They improve their defense. They improve their line. They improve their skill position. The only thing that hasn't improved is Jalen Hurts. I think that he's probably going to be going to do enough, but we really haven't seen. And if he doesn't do enough, they got Gardner Minshew. You know, maybe he maybe he's enough. I think. Their roster solid. I think Jalen Hurts is definitely a good enough quarterback to get them to win the division over. Um, personally, I also have over on the Eagles, but I still think there's going to be some type of tiebreaker or Dallas will win out by one against the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to be a close race between those two. Um, I, I think J- Jalen Hurts will continue to improve. He's a very good uh, improviser. Um, he's got wide receiver threats now. You got Devonta Smith and um, oh, what's his name? I'm blanking. AJ Brown. AJ Brown. Uh, and then you got some solid running backs. Um, the defense is looking solid, and their old line is looking great too. Mm-hmm. It's honestly hard for me not to even switch up my decision now, but <laughs> I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with Dal- Dallas just because okay. of Dak. Okay, fair enough. Okay, now I. This is the easiest. Yes, on this list for the Washington Commanders, I don't see seven and a half at all. They're lucky to get to five under. Um, yeah, well, I'll keep the short two. Only two good players on this team are Terry McLaurin and Chase Young. Otherwise, I mean, you might as well just purposely tank if you're this team to get better players. Mm-hmm. True. Now, while that one was easy, I thought the Eagles was easy too. Another hard one is the New York Giants for me. I think they're going to be a lot improved. Joe Judge was just not it. I almost feel it's going to be like an Urban Meyer situation. It's just going to be a breath of fresh air. I ranked Brian Dable back in Sports Pod episode one or two as the number one head, potential head coaching hire, and the Giants got him. He's bringing in a new culture. They, their offense is honestly not terrible besides their O line, which was the worst in the league last year. They improved it a little bit, but even like the twentieth. O-line, best O-line in the league is not terrible with Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Toney, some solid players. The defense got a little better. Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal was a solid O-line addition as well. They got two great tackles, Thomas, Neal. Seven is an extremely tough number. I think they get seven, but we have to go over or under, which is more likely. I don't see them going 6 and 11. I think there's a better chance of 8 and 9, so I'm going over. That's a very good point. The 18 week season is definitely benefits the team. Mm-hmm. Um, although, I don't see them winning in week, week 18, so I'm going to take the under. Ooh. Uh, I think, I mean, like we said, 7 is a very, very tough number. They could mm-hmm. very easily be hitting 7. Um, but I will go for the under. Um, obviously, they've improved with the draft picks. Uh, you got Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal. Two, I mean, at the beginning of the season, those were both of them were top five picks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they still should have been. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I could have easily seen them both being top five mm-hmm. picks. Um, and, I mean, way to put, it, like, a good leader as a rookie into your defense. I mean, what better oh, yeah. person in, like, this class could you have put – in your defense to help the Giants step up. Mm-hmm. Also, improving that O-line is going to be very helpful for Daniel Jones because he still needs to figure some things out. And mm-hmm. even with that, you're going to help out uh, Saquon Barkley back there. Easily the most talented player you got back there. Haven't seen much out of him last year. I mean, he was injured, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you're going you're gonna to see more out of him this year. I don't think he's going to get injured for as long as he was last year. Um, receiving needs help. But, like I said, it's it's going to improve a little bit. Great draft picks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just see everything improving. So I think they're just going to be better than last year, but just not enough. Yeah. It is a contract year for both Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. They're going to be motivated. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see if their defense is enough to get them to over under. It, it, it's a very tight decision. What's not a tight decision for me is the Green Bay Packers at 11 and a half. 
absolutely under on the Packers. Maybe I'm biased. I almost definitely am biased. I see the Packers with a down year this year. I might not even see them make the playoffs. I see them at like eight wins or so. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I know, I don't think he should have won the MVP last year. Didn't deserve it, as I Sports Spot it. Episode 1 if, said. If you go back, I, I only got one wrong, and that was Coach of the Year. Yep, you did. But sometimes it's not about predicting. It's about who's most deserving. Aaron Rodgers has been a choke artist. I mean, NFC Championship game. He, he lost his engagement this past offseason. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, if you just look, they lost to Darius Smith, they lost to Devontae Adams. Are Alan Lazard and Christian Watson going to be enough? Their running backs are still the same. Their line's fine. Their defense, it's around number 10. But is their offense? It, the team is just looking like meh to me right now. They, they're they screaming 8-9, and 9-8. Nine, nine and eight. Here's the thing. Here's what I struggle with the Packers. I go year to year thinking that they're not going to do as well as they do, mm-hmm. and then somehow they do it. They're getting the buys. Now, let's let's take a simple fact. Who was the best duo last year in the NFC? I would argue that it was Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. Now, that think. is split now. Devontae Adams is gone. One of the best short route uh, wide receivers I've ever seen like during my time. Now that that's gone... I'm surprised people are even betting over 11.5. That's just ridiculous. There's no team like the Packers that are going to be 11.5. Like, are you going to see 12 and 5 next year out of this team? I already know no. you said you didn't. <laughs> no, no, this no. is not a 12 win team. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the defense isn't that good. I mean, some people said their running backs were decent last year. I didn't mm-hmm. see it. Um, and. I mean, you also gave away, um, what's his face, to the Chiefs, uh, uh, Scott Scantling. Scantling. It's, you're just going downhill. I'm surprised Aaron Rodgers hasn't retired at this point. I would hate to be on the Packers. Um, at least request for a trade at this point. Well, he did, he did oh, sign, the, sign the deal. By the way, probably eight or nine wins. I see them barely making the playoffs. Okay. I'm shocked that Max agrees with me, but I've got the Packers barely not making the playoffs. Spoiler. But you know who I do have making the playoffs and winning the division? The Minnesota Vikings. I do too. Okay. And that's Skull. enough. Your school. Yeah. I need to give you some reasonings here. New coach. We're finally beyond Mike Zimmer's system of run, run, pass on third and eight. We're going to be freeing things up. Cook's, Cook's going to be more of a passing threat. He's elusive. It's time to stop running in between the tackles constantly. You know, who had the play callings there? Then, then we've got the fact that Mike Zimmer, this is a classic medieval time period. He upgraded his son to defensive coordinator, and we were just terrible at defense. That's primogeniture, right? Big words. Max wanted big words. I did want big words. Yep. We got more big words here. The defense has so much talent, but just didn't come together. We've got Eric Kent. We got Patrick Peterson, Eric Hendricks, Anthony Barr, Harrison Smith, Zadarius Smith, Harrison Phillips. Don't forget about Lewis Sine. Yeah, Lewis Sine, and, Sine. And Andrew Booth, Daniil Hunter. There's so much talent on defense. There's a lot of talent on offense too. Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins. He doesn't have to be top ten. A top twenty quarterback is making this team just go to the next level. The offensive line's not terrible. If you just look at the talent. On paper, there's no reason why this team shouldn't have made the playoffs last year. They're winning the division with a new coach, if he's any good, and hopefully even further, because I'm a Vikings fan. I really want that. It might not happen, but I think they're winning the division. I might give Sam a bunch of baloney about the Vikings, <laughs> but I'll give you seven reasons why the Vikings are going to win. Seven. seven reasons why the Vikings are going to Count it out for me. Number one, continuity. They kept... Kirk Cousins, probably one of the mm-hmm. greatest quarterbacks ever to step on the Vikings. So. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be wrong. He's probably one of the top five best quarterbacks to play for the Vikings, which is the, sad, but true. The best, the second best running back duo in the NFL but behind the Browns. Mm-hmm. They got Madison and Cook. Very solid. Just, it, I mean, if one of them gets injured, you've got the yeah. other. Um, Adam Thielen. Mm-hmm. I mean, still yeah. there. Justin freaking Jefferson. 
So that's the continuity, right? Yeah, yeah. That's only one. Oh, you, you wouldn't do with your hands that's, like but this. That's you, can't, you can see that below No, that. number two, improvements. The defense. Just go, if you want to replay 50 seconds back to what Sam said, go ahead and just talk to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, these are going to be quick. These are going to be quick. Kirk Tember. Kirk Tober. <laughs> Kirk Vember. Kirk Sember. And Kirk January. Okay. They, they're going to the freaking playoffs. They are winning it. Mm -hmm. I could even see a potential buy because I see nothing out of the rest of the teams in their division. Yeah, we might not get that Kirk Brewery. The Vikings have been known to not do great in the playoffs. But I think they're making the playoffs. We're getting Kirk January. <laughs> How can you say that and have the Minnesota Miracle? Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, if you look at the Vikings playoffs record, it's, it's not great. Yeah, I could I could get it up, but I see it this year. Yeah, thank you, thank you. What I don't see is the Chicago Bears getting the six and a half though. I I talked about why I didn't like their off season earlier. I think they're about. I think they got six wins last year. They just got worse. Maybe Justin Fields became so much better, but I don't I don't think he did. He might be a little better. They're not making a jump up any higher. They're under. Yeah, I got the under on the Bears as well. Um, absolutely zero improvements, and you put away your best veteran on your team, um, Cleo Mack, to the Chargers. Um, and then the only talent you have right now is Justin Fields. I don't see him doing that much without any help in the offense. Um, so I definitely got the under. I have him as the worst team. You have him as the worst team? I'll, if he says the same, I have him as the worst team in this division. Okay. I also have them as the worst team in the division. They have the same over under as the Detroit Lions, who six and a half is a very tough number for me. But the Bears, I don't see them getting close to getting seven, obviously under. Lions, I think six or seven is where they're going. Dan Campbell, he's a great coach for a team that's just doesn't have the, be the most talent. They've got some young guys they want to improve. They need that kind of coach like Dan Campbell. Six, six and a half. It's extremely tough. I'm I'm very conflicted. I'm gonna go slightly over though. It's a tough decision, but over. Okay. Um, I got just over as well. I hate to say that, but I agree with Sam on this one. Um, I don't know if you brought this up, but you put Hutchinson and Williams on your team. Two gigantic improvements. Um, Jared Goff might still have a rough time, but I still see him as a decent quarterback. A lot. Of, I mean, a lot of people forget what he did on the Rams. He was good on the Rams. Um, their O line, eh, it's it's iffy. Yeah. Um, you got Orwarier as your cornerback. I love Orwarier. I think he's pretty good. Um, I think their secondary is decent. Then you add Hutchinson on your D line. Or wait, will he will he be an edge player or will he be a linebacker? He's gonna be on the edge. Okay, so you got Hutchinson as a pass rusher there. I I see this team improving. Uh, and then you had Amon Ross St. Brown join with Williams this year. So I think that is very helpful. Hawkinson is not going to have troubles being marked this year if Williams is now on the team. So I see a lot of improvement on this team. Mm -hmm. Seven wins. Interesting. I was very conflicted. Max is not the most conflicted. I would like to pause to say that the Vikings have the seventh best all-time winning percentage out of any NFL team. The best to never win the Super Bowl. They're 21-30 uh, and 30 in the playoffs in history. Four and seven over the last 20 years. It's not great, but you know. And one of them was the Minnesota Miracle, just to be clear. Yes. Out of the, and the other one was Kyle Rudolph pushing off on a Saints player. We we would have scored there anyway. Let's Wait. be honest. We were like that was that was first and goal from the one. It's not. Was, which one was the Des Bryant one? When Des Bryant got screwed on uh, that catch. That was against the Packers, I think. Oh yeah, it was Packers. Yeah. He caught that. I think I think most people agree. Des yeah, he, Bryant did, did catch. catch that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, we got caught off in our NFC North to NFC South transition here. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you know they just signed Kyle Rudolph. Uh, I'm gonna go over. They Very good in Madden, by the way, Kyle Rudolph. Okay. Yeah. Kyle Rudolph is good for like one thing: contest catches, because he's not very fast. He doesn't run routes great, but you can just throw it up to him, Big and he, guy. he'll just always catch it for some reason. He'll have like 200 yards, eight touchdowns for the Buccaneers. 
because they got O.J. Howard, Cameron Bray, like, they're going to do most of the, like, the, the normal tight end stuff, but they're just going to put him in for the, for the red zone. The goal line. <laughs> <laughs> the goal line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Buccaneers, 11 and a half. They, they don't have much change, to be honest. They lost Antonio Brown. I don't know what he's doing. Hopefully he's doing well. They added Russell Gage. Godwin might not be ready right away. Their team, they lost Gronk. They replaced with Rudolph. Their defense is roughly the same. They did lose, I believe, Ali Marpet on the old line. They're about the same as they were last year. 11 and a half is pretty close. But I'd say they go a little over. 12, 13 maybe. If they, they get to play the Falcons, Panthers, and Saints twice, they're getting five wins out of that. I, I'd say they go over. I've got the under personally. I see a little bit of improvement in two of the other teams, those two not being Atlanta. Um, <laughs> they've got one of the best defenses in the league, especially their D-line, it's a crazy D-line, and two very solid linebackers in Levante David and uh, Shaq. Anyway, you, I mean, just, I mean, how do you improve on defense sometimes? You can't with this team. This team is pretty good. And obviously, you have the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. Uh, I mean, I don't know how... Is Leonard Fournette still on the team? Yeah. Um, uh, I, Leonard Fournette did check in the training camp, 32 pounds overweight, so we'll see that ooh, as a developing story. That's that, breaking news as we're recording Again, this. I don't see uh, the running game being that good this year. That's that's why I have them on their downside. But then, again, you have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and three very solid tight ends. It's, it's actually hard not to choose over, but I just... I, I see some close losses, mm-hmm. and that's that's the only reason why. Mm-hmm. You know, while Leonard Fournette could be the new Eddie Lacy, I see Alvin Kamara being the next Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson had controversy for, we'll just say, throwing a few jabs at his child. Yeah. Alvin Kamara got gotten to some controversy this, this off season for throwing a few jabs at someone in a bar. Team prison. Yep. You know what happened for Adrian Peterson literally that next season? He went off. He was insanely good. <laughs> Alvin Kamara, he might get a rest of a few weeks with a suspension. That's just going to be good for him. He's going to beat the allegations, not by not getting being suspended, not by not being guilty. But I've got a famous quote that, oh, you know Adrian Peterson? He, wasn't he the one who beat his child? Well, I don't care. He rushed for 200, for 2,000 yards for my fantasy team. That's what people are going to say. Alvin Kamara, he's going to he's gonna go off. If they have a game on a holiday again, he's insane on Christmas and Thanksgiving. He, he rushed for like five touchdowns. Was it six against the Vikings on Christmas? No idea. That was not my favorite Christmas ever. Maybe shouldn't base that on Vikings Saints games, but uh, they they low-key got the best receiving trio trio in the NFL. Maybe not like a top 10 guy, but Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and Chris Olave are all, I'd have to say, top 40, top 45 guys, which is great. Jameis Winston coming back from the ACL tear, maybe comeback player of the year incoming. Their defense is just always good. It's not great, but number 15 defense, that's average. Their offense is, I think, above average. Seven and a half is absolute, is a little below average. So even if they're just average, I think they sneak into the playoffs. The Saints always just have that little, like, sneaky good feeling. I think they're going to sneak their way to nine or ten wins and make the playoffs. That's where we disagree. So Sam said it earlier. I'll say it now. I think this is the team that's just going to miss the playoffs. He mm-hmm. said it was the Packers. Oh, ah, yeah. um, I think I, I see this as an eight-win team. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're out of the playoffs. They very well could be a nine, but I see it as an eight-win team, only because of Jameis Winston. Obviously, you got the most unique quarterback of Taysom Hill, also behind him, which I mean is very helpful. Mm-hmm. But um, the reason why I have him at eight is because you got Michael Thomas back, and obviously you got Alvin Kamara. Um, those are two very very solid players, uh, very dynamic. Um, their defense, I mean Cam Jordan. That's basically the only name that I can really think of. It's always just sneaky good, though, for some reason. Like, Teron Armstead, they're always just, like, good. Like, 
I don't know why. But yeah, that's why I have them barely not making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Alabama. Okay. Everyone already. Yeah, I took games. about three minutes talking about the Saints. I won't take that long on the Falcons. I think they're getting the number one overall pick. They're not good. Easy under. I got the under as well. All right, go on. Okay, okay. Carolina. Carolina Panthers, six wins. Now we just took the same spread as we did from the last one to make it fair. In between that happening, Baker Mayfield has been added to the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers have the potential to be a lot higher with Baker, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. An offensive line defense, they're fine. But I don't think it's happening. Matt Rule, I think, is the worst coach in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey, if he stays healthy, I could see them getting to just getting with their talent to above six. I don't see that happening. I'm going under with the Panthers. I have to really quickly look up something uh, for Carolina just to make sure I'm absolutely fine. Okay, yeah. You got, I got the over, barely though. I mean, seven wins. Uh, Carolina, you got Baker Mayfield, huge improvement from Sam Darnold in my opinion. Um, you got Christian McCaffrey back there. Um, then you got DJ Moore, who I think is a very underrated wide receiver. Um, and then you also got Robbie Anderson, who's solid. Um, there goes the phone. But anyway, that that's just calling to tell everyone that I actually got that over. Unlike Sam. Anyway, um, their O-line isn't great. Mm -hmm. Their defense isn't great. But I can see some of those key substitutes that they didn't have last year. I mean, I'm... Their wide receiving core was sane, basically, but mm -hmm. you got Baker Mayfield now, and Christian McCaffrey isn't getting hurt, so yeah, yeah. that's why I have him at seven. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to the NFC West here, where I'm just looking at this number. It, it's juicy, like a like a big fat steak right there, or something else if you prefer. It's nice and nice and meaty and juicy. Uh, sorry, that was just in my head. I I just had to say that. Uh, the Rams, ten and a half wins. That's just, it's baloney. It's malarkey. It's whatever you want to call it. They're not going ten and seven with that roster. Depending, I know that there's a little bit of a hangover from winning the Super Bowl, but they're not going ten and seven. Like, let at least eleven wins. I'd say twelve or thirteen for them. Easy over. Um, I'll say this really quickly. I don't think the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl. It's really hard to repeat. Mm -hmm. It's just some type of jinx. Um, unless you're Tom Brady. Anyway, I mean, they might have lost Robert Woods, maybe some other player that I don't know. Mm -hmm. But all Odell. they did was all they did was slightly improve. And I just don't see this team being worse than it was last year. You got Cooper yeah. freaking Cup at wide receiver, so what do you expect? Matthew Stafford at quarterback. I don't really need to list any more names. Um, Aaron Donald, I guess, but. Mm -hmm. It's just the Rams, man. They're, they're going to be the top of their division. Easy over for me. Yeah. The next one, it's a bit of an interesting one. The Arizona Cardinals. I, I was a little bored at my job the other day, and they had TVs up on the wall. It was on SportsCenter, and they were doing a segment on Cliff Kingsbury. I was just shocked at the stark difference in the start of the season versus the end of the season for Cliff Kingsbury. I don't know what he's doing. Is he just, like snoozing after week eight it was just ridiculous like i could look up these numbers but it was night and day nine wins <laughs> i mean they made the playoffs last year i don't exactly see them doing that they i mean deandre hopkins is suspended for a bit they added marquise brown they they got some talent on there james connor they're running back he's fine their defense i just didn't think that team was that good last year they started off really hot they were undefeated. They were like 7-0 or something, right? Yeah, they started I mean, out hot. Then they just stunk. I, yeah. Well, they didn't exactly stink, but they were a slightly below 500 team the rest of the year. I think that's what this team actually is. I think nine wins isn't what they're getting. Eight, maybe seven. They're not making the playoffs. This team is an under for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, you got to factor in that Arizona had that very lucky streak at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just tailed off, and that's when they started getting into their conference games, right? I mean, you got some, you got two very solid teams in your conference, so I don't see them beating those two out. I think they're gonna lose both times to them, actually. So I think that's four straight losses anyway. Um, so 
Kyler Murray, he's on the fence too. I mean, he's pretty close to not staying. Um, mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins, great wide receiver, but remember that one of their wins was off of that fluke. I mean, just throw from Kyler. Yeah. And, I mean, DeAndre Mossy and three people, and it was the Bucks too, right? It, it was the Bills. Oh, it was the Bills. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it was a good team. That's what I was yeah, remembering. Yeah. Anyway. I don't see them having that same run they had at the beginning of the season. Therefore, I see them as a 7-1 team. Okay. San Francisco 49ers, this might be the hardest one. 10 wins? I mean, that's maybe what I would say. Like, <laughs> It's all about Trey Lance. We really haven't seen Trey Lance. Yeah. If Trey Lance pulls the Patrick Mahomes of this guy with ridiculous potential who sits for a year behind a pro-style quarterback who's just all right and is good enough to lead his team to the playoffs but not quite win them a Super Bowl, like, it's the exact same setup there. Like, Alex Smith, very similar to Jimmy Garoppolo. Trey Lance, very similar to Patrick Mahomes. I don't think he's going to be Patrick Mahomes, but there was a quote that I love from Jameis Winston that he heard from Drew Brees. You don't have to be Batman. Sometimes you can just be Bruce Wayne. If you look at the 49ers got weapons. They got a great offensive line. Mm-hmm. They got some solid running backs, Elijah Mitchell. They got rid of Ricky Moster. But the 49ers just seem to always throw these random running backs like, and give them 100 yards, and then everyone's got to pick them up in fantasy, and then they just switch it around. Yeah, I remember. They're Raheem, almost like the new Patriots. Ricky Moster went out in the first five minutes, and they subbed in Elijah Mitchell, and he had, the, he had a pretty good season. Yeah. They got Debo Samuel. They got Brandon Ayuk. They got good weapons. They got George Kittle. I almost forget about George Kittle. I just don't always remember tight ends. Their defense, very good, centered around Bosa there. I th- This is all about betting on Trey Lance. This is a number that I would not want to bet with a 35 and a half foot pole. Like, if Trey Lance is a bad quarterback, they're getting seven wins. If he's a, a fine quarterback, they're probably getting about 10. If he's better than we expect, they're getting higher than that. I'm not confident, but I'm going to say over because I think they're making the playoffs, so I don't know. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. You got Trey Lance here, right? He not only sat out for one season, but he sat out for two because mm-hmm. you had his college yep. team. He didn't start his college team. Anyway, two years is a while. To mm-hmm. But he did play six games in six games last year, to which he started. So he's got some NFL experience. Mm-hmm. I'm not too worried about Trey Lance. You've got two very good weapons at wide receivers. You've got Ayuk and Debo. Debo's one of the most scrappy players in the NFL right now. And then you've got big kahuna George Kittle, easily top two wide receiver. Um, mm-hmm. I, I hate Iowa people, but it's hard to hate George Kittle. He's a great player. Like Sam said, pretty decent O-line. It, their defense isn't the best in the league, but it's decent. It's, mm-hmm. it's up there. you got, you got names. you got Nick Bosa. Um, it's, it's hard to – I mean, I already said that they're going to beat Arizona twice. Yeah, I think they're going to beat Seattle twice. That's four games on their resume right mm-hmm. there. Um, so, you know, I was leaning towards the under, but now I kind of want to choose the over because – that's four Ooh. wins in your division already, isn't it? But I, mean, I just see this team at yeah. ten wins. It's hard. I mean, I mean that's that's what they were at last year, wasn't it? Ten wins. Yeah. And with with Jimmy G, like. And Jimmy G's a solid quarterback. I will reluctantly say the over, but that has to come along with some early wins in mm-hmm. the season. So. Yeah. Max and I both with extremely reluctant overs. I'm going to take a second straight reluctive over on the Seattle Seahawks at six wins. I, I wanted to disagree with Max. I feel that we agreed way too much in this episode here, yeah. which is unfortunate, but, you know, we kind of think alike a lot, I feel. But the Seahawks, I think Drew Locke's a little better than you give him credit for. If the 49ers release Jimmy Garoppolo, I could see them just picking up Jimmy Garoppolo right there. That's what oh, the that rumor mill is, is saying. I didn't even Although, think about that. I almost feel the 49ers are going to like trade him for a 7th round pick and then give that team like some cash considerations to ensure that the Seahawks aren't signing Jimmy G. 
I don't think they want to face him two times a year for years down the road. Yeah. The, their team, their offensive line isn't very good. Rashad Penny is probably going to be their starting running back this year. They also got Chris Carson, who broke his neck last year. I don't think he's going to be playing for most of this year. They got Kenneth Walker. They got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Gerald Everett. Their, their offense, if they add Russell Wilson, their offense is good enough to get maybe into the playoffs. Their defense still isn't great. They got Blitz Boy, but beyond that, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just wanted to disagree with Max on this one at the end, but I'm going over. You know, I could very well see what Sam's seen because it's hard to bet against Pete Carroll. I mean, you've seen him pull wins out of his butt. So <laughs> it's, it's he's a good coach. Um, however, I don't see any quarterback improving at all. I mean, you just lost Russell Wilson, and this team did not do great last year. No. So, and, I mean, is Bobby Wagner even on the team? Is he retired yet? He's old, if he still is. I don't remember. He's old. So, otherwise... I I just I got the under. I mean, if they pick up Jimmy G, it could be a different story. But I just don't see Drew Lock, Lock being good at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair, fair enough. Even if I say he's better than people think of that, that's not that I'm saying that he's very good. I think instead of saying that he's the 40th best quarterback in the NFL, he might be like the 30th best. You know, it's all right. Well, that concludes our. NFC, AFC, over under win totals. I'm sure at some point that we will record our picks, go through the pod, or look. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, we'll take a look. Hopefully, I win. Maybe not. We'll see. We agreed on like maybe 15 to 20 of these. So, I mean, it's up to those other ones. But we'll see. You want to do a quick draft uh, thing? Uh, sure. Right, let me check out what we've got on the time real quick. Let's, let's, draft. let's start our drafts here. It's going to sim. Oh, Max, Max is on Wi-Fi, unlike me, so he's going a little... A little faster. So I'll go first. So what I've got up here is a bunch of... Uh, i got three running backs on the top. i got Mixon, Harris, and Chubb. Um, personally, I... And there's also Justin Jefferson. Um... Honestly, this is a running back. I mean, running backs are very important. So you want to take running backs early. And since Kenny Pickett is a rookie, I see them running a lot. So I'm going to take Najee Harris. Okay. Unlike Max in my simulator, someone took Chubb. So Cooper Cup is still on the board. Oh, that's so dumb. They ranked Joe Mixon above Cooper Cup because it's a non-PPR with their just default. I still think that it's valuable to get the number one wide receiver on the board. I'm taking Cooper Cup. That that was a very good pick. It's a simulator. Um, Both of us are going to get different luck here. So we got I, on my top four on the board right now are Williams running back out of Denver. We got CeeDee Lamb, Mark Andrews, and Stephon Diggs. Personally, I like to take a wide receiver or a running back with my second pick as well. So I'm going to rule out Mark Andrews right away, right? Um, and then you gotta think about Amari Cooper is gone, so now C. D. Lamb is now the number one wide receiver. Um, I want to make sure I have a good wide receiver because I mean, are you, we're in the PPR league, right? It's it's not PPR. It's not PPR. Yeah. Well, I usually do it PPR, so I'm just I'm, I'm not a big PPR it. guy. So I'm gonna pick C. D. Lamb. Okay, so I've got a similar top four. I got Javante Williams, Leonard Fournette, Mark Andrews, and Debo Samuel here. Definitely a tough decision. I went wide receiver in the first round. If I had gone running back, I would probably go Mark Andrews or Debo Samuel, but I don't want to not get a running back in the top two picks. You know, I'd maybe go Leonard Fournette, but the news came out with him about him being Eddie Lacy version two, so I'm going to take Javante Williams. I've got a very tough decision here because a lot of these players are not going to get a lot of reps, in my opinion, because they have very solid players on the team. You got AJ Brown, Cam Akers, Ezekiel Elliott, and George Kittle. I think the Rams are more of a passing team, so I am not going to take Cam Akers here. Um, I don't know what is going to happen in San Francisco with Trey Lance, so I'm not for sure if he's going to be targeting his faster wide receivers. Um, so I'm going to rule out George Kittle. So that leaves me AJ Brown and Ezekiel Elliott. Now I'm a little scared here because you got Devonta Smith. I think I might have to 
and Ezekiel Elliott's bye is on nine, which I already have a similar player with that, so I'm going to have to take A.J. Brown. Okay. See, A.J. Brown went off the board for me already. So I got Kyle Pitts, T. Higgins, Cam Akers, and Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke's a bum. If you want, you can also, like, get more by going all okay, the positions there. Like, if you want to draft a quarterback or a defense mm -hmm. player. So... I don't really like drafting a tight end early, I'll be honest. I, I just bypass all those good guys and settle for like... A solid. Yeah, Dalton Schultz, Dallas Goddard in like the 11th or 12th round. I think it's more important to focus on the other positions. I don't love Cam Akers or Zeke, so I'm going to go wide receiver here. You got T. Higgins, Keenan Allen. Very tight for which one I'm going to go with, but... Keenan Allen's getting a little old, so I'm going to take T. Higgins. Personally, I like to get my two wide receivers and two running backs early on the board, unless quarterbacks are being picked early, which they are not so far. Um, so the top four are really scary right now. We got Travis Etienne, Damian Harris, A.J. Dillon, and Miles Sanders. Personally, I don't like Damian Harris that much. I know some people do. A.J. Dillon, definitely a no. Uh, Miles Sanders and no, so I am left to choose Travis Etienne, which I think he could have a breakout season because mm -hmm. I mean no one's seen him before, and he's with Trevor Lawrence. Okay, see so while Max is going there, I'm very tempted to go quarterback here. That my number two quarterback, their number two quarterback, Justin Herbert, is still on the board here in the fifth round. It, sorry, it's not the fifth round; it's the fourth round here. It's very tempting. I think I'm going to go with it over Elijah Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins, D.J. Moore. I don't love those guys. I'm going to take an opportunity for a great quarterback to get Justin Herbert. Okay, so I, I'm i looking at my things right now, and, like, there's Justin Herbert is a great quarterback, right? And But I see Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, and Joe Burrow still on the board. And a lot of people don't know this, but Jalen Hurts was really good last year. So I might have to wait for him, and if that doesn't work, I don't think people are going to take Joe Burrow, and I'm glad to take Joe Burrow with the Jamar, T Jamar Chase and T. Higgins duo. So I am going to go back, and I also see Brandon Cooks on the board, and I think he is one of the best sleepers, always a good sleeper. He's going to go on my slot, Brandon Cooks. You know, funny that Max said that. I, I'm also planning to take Brandon Cooks. I only have one running back at the moment, but I don't love the guys right now, Damian Harris, A.J. Dillon. Clyde Edwards Alaire. I don't love any of those guys in the fifth round. I think Brandon Cooks is a lot better value. I'm taking Brandon Cooks. And just like I said, this worked out so perfectly. Number one on the board is Jalen Hurts. Easy pick. I oh. said it last time. Interesting, interesting. Okay. I think I might be selling here honestly. I, I had a great warm up draft, which it gave me an A plus. He did, ninety seven out of hundred. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting that. I got to take a running back here. Let's see, you got Rashad Penny, Devin Singletary, Kareem Hunt, Tony Pollard. All those guys are fine. I, I think we got to go with the guy who I'm the most confident with is going to get starting work, and that's going to be Rashad Penny because Chris Carson's not going to be ready. I'm going to take Penny. Here's what I'm working with right now. Um, on the board, we got Rashad Penny, uh, uh, Rashad Bateman, uh, Gordon, Guys, Melvin Gordon, which I I'm definitely not picking them because you got Williams at number one, and then you got Devonta Smith. I already have um, uh, AJ Brown, so I'm not gonna pick Devonta Smith either. Um, then we got Rashad Penny and Rashad Bateman. I picked three wide receivers, two running backs. This could go either way. Stan tells me that uh, Rashad Bateman is a very good sleeper, mm -hmm. which makes me tempted, but. I need another running back, and he's a starter, so I have to pick Rashad Penny. Okay. Guess what? Man, Max got Rashad Penny a pick later than me. Uh, that that was rough. Maybe shouldn't have taken Penny, but I, I was desperate for a running back. That's why I don't think I'm going to get the best grade. Uh, I kind of had to reach for the positions I needed. But I'm not going to reach for a sleeper that I love, Rashad Bateman right here. He's their third highest guy available. I'm taking him. Um... We got a bunch of wide receivers on the board, which makes me think that uh, the tight ends are still being slept on, which we got two good tight ends at the top. We got Goddard and Hogginson, so I'm hoping that they'll stay. I have Devonta Smith, Adam Thielen, Tyler Lockett, and Brandon Ayuk. Um, 
personally, I cannot take Devonta Smith and Adam Thielen. I mean, he's not going to get as many reps behind Justin Jefferson, so that leaves me Tyler Lockett and Brandon Ayuk. The problem is, is that um, George Kittle is. Wait, did I? No, I think George Kittle and Debo Samuel will be taking some stuff, and I do have Rashad Penny, but I'm gonna have to go with Tyler Lockett. Okay, I, I'm very upset with my dearth of running backs right now, but I think I just gotta commit to it. I don't love the running backs on the board yet again, so I'm drafting a tight end, top on their board. I'm going Dalton Schultz. That's your top right now. Top tight end. It wasn't oh. top overall. Wait, he must have already been picked on that. Yeah, he must have. Um, so we got Dallas Goddard and TJ Hawkinson still there. So I don't know what's really going on. I think those are two very solid wide receivers. Dalton Schultz is on the board. Or Dalton, God, Dallas Goddard. I got Dalton Schultz in my mind. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's time to take Robert Woods. Um, is he the top wide receiver? For the Titans? Probably. Yeah, but they don't have a good quarterback. He's a little old. You know, you know I was, he's not a bad player. I'm really, I'm, I'm going to take Robert Woods only because I think TJ Hawkins will stay on the board. Okay. I've, I've really got to get a, a running back right now. I'm taking the guy with potential. No! Ha! L. Uh, I'm probably still going to take this L here. But I'm taking a guy with big potential who I think could do well. I'm taking James Cook. He could get a lot of points for the Bills. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to be left with Dallas Goddard because TJ Hawkinson was picked one pick before me. I think uh, the fantasy app is going to kill me because I've picked two players on two of the same teams. Mm. But I'm going to have to pick Dallas Goddard. That hurts. I've got a very tough decision here. Let's see. Who's the starting running back on the Houston Texans? Uh, Marlon Mack or Damian Pierce. That's what I thought. So, in the 10th round, you know, once again, I'm not looking at running backs. I've got a great team besides the running back. I've got a value that's just staring me in my face right now. Russell Wilson is still on the board. I'm taking them as a backup quarterback at the number 114th overall pick. Personally, I don't need backup quarterbacks, so I'm looking at more running backs and wide receivers, and Marlon Mack is a starter, so I'm drafting him. Interesting, interesting. Oh, a defense is going. Okay, let's see. I've got hmm, Marlon Mack. He, he's still on the board here. I'm tempted by it. Very tempted, but uh, you know what? I know this is non PPR, but he's just always solid. So I'm gonna go with Naheem Hines right now. So I got Hunter Henry, Naheem Hines, Trey Lance, and the Buffalo defense on my board. Personally, I don't need a backup tight end right now. I'm looking at that backup quarterback at Trey Lance. A lot of us don't know what he's gonna do, but if he goes break out, he's good to have on my bench. So. Went to Trey Lance, which was, which was very good there. Uh, let's see, I think I got to go wide receiver or running back right now. We got Tyler Alger for the Falcons. Algier, Algier. I don't know how to say it. Maybe I should, but he's got some potential for Daryl Patterson. I'm not sure he's gonna be it for the Falcons. So he's solid wide receiver. We got. Jarvis Landry, Tim Patrick. You know, Jarvis Landry is honestly solid value right now. I'm going to take him. Um, I'm looking at wide receivers as well. Top three on the board are Myers out of New England, Williams out of Detroit, who's a rookie, and Corey Davis from the Jets. Personally, I don't know what Williams is going to do. Um, and I don't want Corey Davis right now because there are good receivers on the Jets now. So I'm picking between Myers and Williams. I think Mac Jones is more of a solid quarterback than Jared Goff, so I'm going to pick Myers. Interesting, interesting. Okay. 
Ooh, defense is just gonna be. You know what? I'm taking the defense right now. Top on the board. I I said that they had a very good defense earlier. They definitely do. I'm taking the San Francisco 49ers. Top three defenses on the board are Colts, Broncos, and Chargers for me. Or I can no, that's the Rams. Um, so personally, I think that the Rams and the Broncos are in harder divisions than the Colts. I think the Colts are in pretty easy divisions, so I'm gonna pick the Colts. Interesting, interesting. Okay, my second to last pick here. Uh, I um, let me see. I I got some wide receivers. I got some running backs. But my running backs are very poor. I need some upside running backs. And I think that upside is going to come from, you know, well, we're looking at Zamir White here with the Raiders. Uh, I really don't know much about him, but he's one of the top wide receivers on the board. Not wide receivers, running backs. We've been recording for an hour. It's it's about time. Maybe I'm going to take an L. Maybe Max is going to take an L. Okay, I think time to beat I think for both of us that that we should do the final pick at the same time because I don't know if it gives us our grades like immediately. Okay. Both Max and I got to get a kicker here. What kicker are you taking? Oh, uh, a bunch of kickers are off the board for sam i've got suck up bucker and sanders on the board oh max has a lot more kickers available. um so i personally don't think miami is going to be too offensive heavy even with a new addition of tyree hill so i'm looking between bucker and suck up you know tim bay seems to settle more for field goals than the chiefs do so i'm gonna pick ryan suck up here i mean i'm in between prater and blankenship so i'm taking prater i got a terrible score I lost. Oh! <laughs> he beat me by one. Eighty-one versus eighty. How? <laughs> Let's go, baby. How? After my A plus earlier. Oh man. Let Let's look at these projected standings. Why was mine so oh, wait, bad? No, I gotta create an account. That's a bit rough. Well, I went out of it already on accident, but you know. I I honestly want uh. You guys to decide who actually won. This is just a website. Um, I'll in fact be looking from uh, a comment from uh, T Nels because I think this is hey. stupid. Because I think I should. Fantasy win. Pros took me by one point. So I don't believe it. I'll take it. I don't believe it. I'll take it. Um, so please leave your comments who won because I'm actually very interested because I personally think I won. Were my running backs Javante Williams, Rashad Penny, and Naheem Hines? I see yes. Yours. Draft board. Well, oh, I, I already went off of mine there. So I had Najee Harris and Travis Etienne. Yeah, but you know, my wide receivers, my tight end, my I I got a great tight end. Well, an average tight end. Them to I got a their I got a great quarterback. I got probably the best wide receivers in the league. It it's a it's a risky strategy. Not going with the running backs. I shouldn't have done that, but I just. That's the one thing you gotta do in fantasy. You just gotta see what the draft board is giving you and take it. You know, didn't have a great draft. Max didn't have a the best draft either, but I just did that much better than Max, so I I'm very happy. So. What, you want a rematch? No, but... Okay. Oh, you know what? Gronkdom Styles game is actually pretty good. Dude, Gronk look at Gronkdom Styles. That's a buff. He's got Cup, Diggs, Camara. Oh. Darren Waller, Mari Cooper, Clyde, Kareem. Okay. I don't know who that is, but he's also got James Garrett, Robinson, yeah, okay. Garrett Wilson, and Derek Carr. Okay. Took really. that, that's very solid. This bot had a better draft than both of us. Max and I might agree on that. But this guy's team is garbage. I would I would have killed that guy. Uh, well, I bet they like make some of the bots do better than others. Imagine, like, three years ago, or two years ago, this IU, Apple of my IU guy got McCaffrey and Barkley. <laughs> I know. But his wide receivers were trash, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't even take a quarterback. I can't believe I oh, wait, no. X'd off of mine on accident, but, you know. We live with it. I don't know. I think I, I, think I, I, think I can be a lot hey. of teams on this. Well, oh.
don't want to block it. I'm so sorry. Um, look at our beautiful logo. Okay. We're going to sign off for now or whatever everybody says on YouTube. So Do we, do we have a signature sign off? Just um, Well, we haven't had, had school's it coming up and it might be a long time till the NFL season. So we never know when we'll see another one of these. Yep. You never know. So enjoy it while it lasts. Maybe there'll be a World Cup preview episode or, you know. There could be. Who knows? Something like that. Maybe so, college football. Who knows? It's the sports pod. Subscribe to the NFL sports pod. pod right here. Point it out, Sam. Yep, right there. Hit that like button. Make sure to turn that bell on. Get your notifications going. Comment down below if you like the video, guys. And, you know, it's been an excellent time.